And it might be raining outside, but it is perfectly dry. It's basketball weather here inside Cedar Crest College. I'm Joey Draper, joined alongside by Derek Moore. We've got Penn State Lehigh Valley against Penn State Two Boys. And as if we needed any more buildup, Zombie Nation's playing in our background right now, the Penn State theme song at football games and basketball games. But Derek, it's great to be with you. Uh, new year of Penn State Lehigh Valley men's and women's basketball. Women's tipping off tonight at six against Penn State Two Boys. An exciting matchup early on. Exciting matchup early on. You know, Penn State. Lehigh Valley comes in with a lot of momentum, building what they did last year, 5-2 and two to start the season. Off to a very good start tonight, Joey. For Penn State Two Boys, they've only played five games this season, 2-3 um, and three record. We talked to their coach before the game, and uh, Pat, he told us quite honestly that they are a young and inexperienced team. They have 10 total players on the roster, five of which are freshmen. So the experience that Penn State Lehigh Valley has and the inexperience that Penn State Two Boys has Sets us up for an, experience, an exciting matchup. Yeah, and you don't have to keep in mind two and three record, but two of those losses they have are by four points or less. So they've hung in there with a lot of different teams, but you're right. The challenge that Penn State Lehigh Valley is going to throw at them is a lot of depth that they have and the amount of substitutions they throw at. Last year we were accustomed to that five in, five out by Lehigh Valley. So that's going to be a very good challenge for that Penn State the boys team tonight. That five in, five out that worked so well for Penn State Lehigh Valley last year was created by the coach on the other sideline tonight. Pat Lewis, he, he told us, I created that. I know what it's about. Lori took that from me. And then he had the biggest, biggest smile on his face. And he said they tried that in the opening couple of games. Didn't really work to the way they wanted it to. Do you think he'll try to bring it back tonight knowing that he can kind of go like for like with this team? I think he's going to pick and choose when he goes to it. I think that's the key. Because whenever you see... Whenever Lori sees someone else do it, put substitution, she's throwing five out. So I think it's a matter of a timing thing and a feel thing with that starting lineup that he's going to throw out there. So look for him to pick his spots where he's going to do that five in, five out, if he's going to do it. But Lori did say to him whenever when he beat it, when she when he beat her when he beat her in his career that she was goes, "You'll never beat me by doing that again." And then ever since she's been doing that. So and it's worked a ton, and we've seen a lot of success with Penn State Lehigh Valley doing that throughout the past few games that we did last year. So I'm glad it's back. And that pressure defense that Coach Khalil throws out is really exciting to watch, Joey. It creates a lot of turnovers and a lot of pressure on the opposing offenses to look for clean passing lanes and all that. So look for an exciting turnover-heavy battle for this Lehigh Valley team. Absolutely. Now, one thing to look at for Penn State Lehigh Valley, last year when we covered them, the first couple of games, they were winning by 20, 25 points. It was big, dominant wins. They didn't have a conference loss last year until January at El tri -C when they played against Penn State Schuylkill. They have a conference loss already today, seven games in. They are 2-1 and one in the conference. Penn State Lehigh Valley also has some young and inexperienced players. So the change that Coach Khalil and the team, she called it growing pains a couple of weeks ago when I talked to her. But they're still being able to win and have success. But is it surprising to you to see that they have a conference loss so early on? No, I don't think it's surprising if you mentioned growing pains to you that sometimes early on in the season you see teams just try to figure out what works, what starting five works, what rotations work. So growing pains is a perfect way to describe it. So it's not alarming and it's not surprising. I think, you know, sometimes a, a good loss, I don't like to say good loss, but sometimes a loss is important to figure out where you need to adjust, how you're going to adjust on defense, offense, your depth, how you're going to rotate play, certain players in and out, who gels the most. So I think sometimes a loss could be important to wake a team up and look, go back to the film room and look for, and correct your mistakes. Absolutely. No loss is a good loss in Coach Lori Khalil's head. If you ever tell her that, she will likely <laughs> have words to say with you. She hates losing. I know that she's a fierce competitor, but we are a minute away from tip-off here at Cedar Crest College. And for Coach Khalil and Coach Pat Lewis, Two coaches very familiar with each other. Two teams maybe not so familiar with each other. It's been a rough last couple of seasons for Penn State Du Bois, but they have the opportunity to get back to 500 tonight if they can pull off the upset win for Coach Lori Khalil's side. Five and two overall and two and one in conference play. They are averaging 79.4 points per game are the late Lehigh Valley Lady Lions. 42% from the field, 29.3% from three point, but something that is the biggest key is 60% from the foul line. That number is even lower this year than it was when we covered them last year. And there were a lot of games where free throws came to be important for this team. How do they, how do they improve their free throw shooting percentage? You just have to just take your time knocking down your shots. They call it the charity strike for a reason. The team's almost giving you points. So I just think it's a matter of knocking down a certain percentage of your shots in practice and just continue to grind those out. Put more emphasis on that. 
Absolutely. And as the buzzer sounds, we are going to get ready for the national anthem and turn it over to the PA announcer. All right, and we are back and ready for the starting lineups tonight. First for the visitors from Penn State Du Bois, we've got Francis Milliron, Shannon Shaw, Rebecca Martin, Natalie Bowser, and Kelsey Stewart. Uh, Derek, in this starting five, last year the nation's leading three-point shooter. Talk to me a little bit about this starting five and what Coach Pat Lewis had to say about his girls. You know, Natalie Bowser broke school, uh, school records this season, or last season, points and rebounds and blocks so Penn State's gonna have their hands full with her down low you gotta be able to be on your A game and contain her down low because this game can get out of not get out of hand but she has the ability to take over a game absolutely and uh, she's broken a couple school records in the first five games of the season she's only a freshman Natalie Bowser so keep an eye on her on the paint and if we have to critique Penn State Lehigh Valley and their point uh, their presence inside the paint, I should say. Last year, that's where it was costly for them in the games against Schuylkill, and Lori has tried her best to recruit someone to stick up in the paint, and now, as you see the starting five for Penn State Lehigh Valley, Aliyah Crozier is going to be that paint presence, but the rest of this five, they're all returning starters from last year. The Newman sisters, Sammy Columna, Gianna Toretta, and like I mentioned, Crozier, so a very familiar starting five. How much of a factor is that in their chemistry working against this Du Bois team that are a bunch of freshmen? Well, chemistry is everything. When you have a, whenever you have a group of players, Joey, that have been playing together for a long time, things just start clicking and you're able to get off the quicker starts. You know where each other are out on the court. You know what passing lanes players like to throw to when you're distributing the ball and positioning on the court. So chemistry is everything. So glad to see a lot of this starting five, especially the Newman sisters return. They were really two fun players to watch last year and I'm glad that they returned. I'm pretty sure Coach Khalil is very glad both Newman sisters are back. Coach Khalil told me as we, before we went on the broadcast mentioned the Newman sisters and their defensive presence. I said well they've got to do that on the court in order for us to do that and she said oh just wait. So I am very excited to see them. It's the Penn State Lehigh Valley home opener. Coach Lori Khalil right next to us on the bench today so if you hear her yelling in the in the headphones it's only because she wants the players to do better. Yep. But, you know, you mentioned the defense. That's something that Coach Khalil and this Penn State Lehigh Valley team really prides themselves on. You know, that's just straight pressure. We're going to press 12 minutes in a quarter, just continuing to throw all kinds of different looks at you. So that's very fun to watch. But it's very – and also it's very tough to beat. How about that camera angle? Excellent job by our crew there getting the pregame huddle for this Lehigh Valley Lady, uh, Lady Lions side. And as – the ladies in white take the court. We await Penn State Du Bois fi starting five. They are going to be in their away navy blues tonight. And it's two and three Penn State Du Bois, five and two Penn State Lehigh Valley. Tipping off here at Cedar Crest College momentarily. It'll be Aaliyah Crozier to jump for Penn State Lehigh Valley. And her opposite number, number 40 in blue, Natalie Bowser.
And we are underway, Lehigh Valley's home opener. The tip goes to Du Bois, and in control is Milliron. She drives with the right, kicks it. Good ball movement here, it ends up with Shaw. And an early turnover as Stewart walked with it, so there's turnover number one forced by this ruthless and relentless Lehigh Valley defense. Columna the inbound to Newman, quickly into the corner. Driving is her sister, the jumper comes up short. Rebound controlled and Du Bois gets a stop at the other end. That miss from Nia Newman. And now here's Stewart, and there's a steal. Toretta throws it ahead, Newman's all alone. And the first two points at home this season for Penn State Lehigh Valley. Two quick turnovers for Du Bois. They're gonna need to be a little bit more decisive to go with the ball. But good job by Penn State Lehigh Valley, creating all kinds of pressure early on. Defense sets the tone for the game, especially early on. Defense fuels the offense. Coach Khalil's favorite phrase, she has a poster of it in her room. That three off the mark, kept in by Sammy Columna, and Lehigh Valley looks to push. Columna looking to go coast to coast. A little bump from behind. The ball ends up with Newman. She had it nearly poked away. Toretta, the three-point shooter, pops one and knocks one down. Gianna Toretta. I know they have a few games under their belt, Joey, but... Gianna Toretta just doing a good job and continue where she, where she left off last year, shooting the three ball at a very high efficient rate. And a foul called here against number 12 in white. That's Nia Newman. And the inbound will take place right in front of us here, Shannon Shaw. And she looks to inbound it. She'll get it back, thrown across the court to Stewart and eventually reaches the corner. Open three at this end, short again that time from Mill Iron, and now Columna on the way down the court. Looks for help. Pops it inside to Crozier, looks for the banker, it won't go. Du Bois gets another stop. Full court press, they're trying to break it. They do. Checking in Martin. That one's no good, Toretta the board. Toretta with a baseball pass, intercepted in midair by Rebecca Martin. End-to-end -end stuff just two minutes in. And now a foul on the far side baseline by the other Newman, Nia Newman. That's her first. So to inbound for Du Bois will be Kelsey Stewart. Her options are Natalie Bowser, but she looks opposite that. And now it works its way back to Mill Iron. Deep two, too high off the square. Offensive board up and in from Natalie Bowser. We highlighted that she's going to be a force inside. You saw it there. You know, even though some of those shots weren't following, but I like some of the shot quality by Lehigh, or Penn State, the boys. Here is Columna with a three, and she knocks it down. So Lehigh Valley with their second triple of the first quarter. Mill Iron. Gets doubled, works it across the court. Stewart poked away, Newman's got it. Little crossover, gets rid of her defender. It's a three on one. Newman, Columna, too strong. Fight for the rebound. And Du Bois trying to work out of it, and they will. Mill iron now, with Toretta on her, throws it. And it bounces its way back to Shaw. She'll try a long two, comes up short. Offensive rebound again, blocked, but got it up somehow. Crozier trying to fight for it, and we have a jump ball. But again, that paint presence from Natalie Bowser on display early. And here we go five with in. our first five in, five out substitution. It's like watching a little bit of hockey with basketball, Joey. Line change. So now Mia Johnson will inbound it underneath the basket. And she will give it to Gabby Girasello. And another returning face, Gabby Girasello, running the point. She gives it off to Chloe Cassidy, who then passed it inside to Trinity Neal. Out of bounds, it'll stay with the Lehigh Valley Lions. 20 to shoot. So this is the second group for Penn State Lehigh Valley that have a couple new faces on it. The only two returning players in this rotation right now from last season's team are Gabby Girasello and looking to see number there, I believe it's, actually I think she's the only returning. Everyone else is new. Mia Johnson, Trinity Neal into the corner. Chloe Cassidy with a strong drive, threw it up wildly and she will get a call. It was a very late whistle, but Chloe Cassidy definitely felt some contact and she will shoot two at the line. You know, they aren't really intimidated by Natalie Bowser's presence down low, even though she 
broke a school record for blocks in a season. Good to see that Penn State Lehigh Valley is not afraid to continue to go inside and not rely on the mid-range jump, mid-range and three ball. There you see, Co there you see Coach Lori Khalil. She said to me at the beginning of the year she needs a bigger presence in the paint. She's gotten Aaliyah Crozier to develop a little bit more. She's got a really aggressive freshman that's on the court right now in Hillary Offing, so beware of her name. And a foul in transition there against Lehigh Valley. But Hillary Offing, the 5'11 freshman from South Carolina, out of your picture right now as she awaits the action to come down the court. But Du Bois will inbound it. And they are unable to break the press, but Trinity Neal gets fouled and Lehigh Valley will retain possession there again. That ruthless and relentless full court pressure by Penn State Lehigh Valley is causing, I believe that's the fifth turnover already from Du Bois. It is, and I think what that pressure also does that we haven't highlighted yet, Joey, it gets, peop it gets players with, that aren't used to bringing up the ball with, or have the ball in their hands. And now Hillary Offing going up strong, and she's got it. Lori Khalil told me she's a monster inside. That's her first two of the night. Lehigh Valley's up 10-2. And now another turnover by Penn State Du Bois. This defense is really causing problems. Girasello will be the inbounder. Into offing, stolen away by Bowser. And now it's Milliron. She looks to go all the way. We'll kick it off, gets it back. Bowser to the corner, this a long two, well off the mark that time from Edson, and then the putback is good. That bucket was Shannon Shaw, Girasello now. On a drive is Cassidy, looking for offing. Neal, she needs help, here it is. Drive layup, off the window, no good that time from Mia Johnson, Du Bois in transition now. Milliron looking to get a bucket. She'll kick it out. Trying again from the same spot. Again unsuccessful with Edson. Girasello's got it. Five and a half left in the first quarter. Girasello. Trinity Neal. Coach Khalil calling for the swing. Cassidy's got it. Girasello open on the baseline. Stepped out first. Turnover. Still like a lot of the shots uh, Penn State the boys is taking, down, uh, especially around the basket, mid-range jump shots, they're just not falling down. So sometimes you start off rough a little shooting, but Penn State Lehigh Valley has lived to tell about it. But what I like about them, when as soon as they get the ball in their hands, they're going. Absolutely, and ball out of bounds against Penn State Du Bois. So turn it back over to Lehigh Valley. Neil, Neil to be the inbounder. Here's Girasello. Into the corner with Neal again. To the inside for offing. And an offensive foul. Or out of out of bounds, excuse me. Thank you, Derek. Out of bounds on offing. It's hard to see that baseline here, our production site. And now Penn State Du Bois in transition. Milliron gets doubled. She kicks. Shaw's got an open three. Too short. And she still is looking for her first triple of the night. Out of bounds to Lehigh Valley. Here comes Gabby G, Girasello, running the point for this second group that Lehigh Valley has on the court. Thought about the three there, did Cassidy. She better makes a better decision, gives it up to Girasello, 15 to shoot. One thing about Penn State Du Bois defense is they're not allowing a lot of movement without the ball. Cassidy's three is pure and without movement of the ball, but still able to find a three. Now Neal with a steal, gives it to Girasello and a foul called. So Penn State Lehigh Valley, and they are just they are just showing no mercy right now. And Penn State Du Bois with another turnover. You know, Joey, I think you're in Coach, Coach Khalil's office a lot. One thing you could probably tell her when you're going to see on this replay, don't take good shots, take great shots. That was a great shot taken. Extends their lead 13-4. to four. Chloe Cassidy, a new member of the Penn State Lehigh Valley team. She is a junior, though, so she spent her first two years at another school, transferred in for this season, and it's been a big impact. Here's Newman for three. No good. They try to keep it, and they cannot. Which Khalil saying follow it. 
probably here at home. The full court press does not stop. It's had a lot of success in the opening minutes of the first quarter and gonna keep it up and Columna pokes it. It'll stay with Du Bois. How does Penn State Du Bois find a way past this uh, full court press right now? Because if they can get down to the offensive end, they might be able to have some success. But here we go, they turn it over on the inbound again. We'll finish that point in a second. Toretta will move it back to Newman. Then she'll get it to the inside to Crozier. Newman, Toretta, and now there's ball movement inside to Crozier. That's a beautiful offensive possession. You said it best, Joey. That was a beautiful offensive possession. Everybody, I believe, touched that ball there, making this defense uncomfortable. And there's the first timeout from Coach Pat Lewis. So to finish our point at 15-4 Lehigh Valley leading, how does Du Bois get past this full court press? Because they need to get some scoring if they're mm -hmm. going to keep this one close. You know, I think they've done a good job of matching the tempo at times, but I just think some of their shots, some of their open looks weren't just falling down. Some of them rimmed in and out and all that, but I just think you just need to do a better job of scoring, especially when you're not rebounding the ball. So rebounding and second chance opportunities is going to be the way that Penn State Du Bois needs to get back in that. So try to be more physical down low. Whenever you're able to get those putbacks, it slows the game down. You're able to get it a little bit more back into a rhythm. So that's how they're going to be able to beat this transition and the tempo that Penn State loves to play with. 4.03 to go in the first. It's been all Penn State Lehigh Valley as of now to the tune of an 11-point lead. We did mention that Natalie Bowser is a big presence inside for Penn State Du Bois, but she's not gonna have a successful night if the ball doesn't get past half court. So let's see if out of the timeout Du Bois is able to break the press. The answer is yes. And here's Edson, she's 0 for 2, make it 0 for 3. Rebound fought for, controlled by Du Bois. Edson back to the top of the key. That's a deep three off the mark that time from Stewart. Caroms around and it'll stay with Du Bois, 13 to shoot. Good job extending this offensive possession at this end. And Bowser is thinking about coming back onto the court, and she will. So I think her substitution break lasted 45 seconds, and now they're going to go right back to her in the offensive end. Columna's guarding her right now. That could be a favorable matchup if Bowser wants to exploit. Edson, Stewart, Columna switches to her now. Back to Edson, tries a little drive, and off the window, no good. Rebound controlled by Aaliyah Crozier. Now Gianna Toretta. One for one in the game with a triple. Driving, kicking, Columna feels the contact. Doesn't get a call, doesn't get the bucket either. Bowser the rebound. The point guards came up, making her uncomfortable too. Gotta get this ball up before a backcourt. And it does end up with Bowser. Stewart's left alone for three. Can't get it to fall. Offensive rebound, put back, also won't fall. Tara Lern Lemer that time couldn't get it to fall. Toretta. Underneath, Lemur in there with the interception. Now she's doubled in the corner. Action-packed first quarter. Look at Nia Newman going from behind to tie it up. Possession arrow favors Penn State Du Bois. Great job by Nia Newman playing with a ton of physicality right there. Not afraid to go after the jump ball. And Penn State Du Bois had numbers on the other end, so good defensive play by Newman. She came up from behind. Absolutely no idea it was coming. Gets the jump ball, arrow stays with the visitors. And now Du Bois has it numbers. Those numbers quickly are dismantled and they go inside looking for two points here. Can't get it to fall was Bowser. Kicks it back out to the top for Stewart. Works its way around, that's a deep two. Also off the mark from Hyde. We have a foul underneath on the floor. It'll stay with Penn State Du Bois, 15 to shoot. White 13 with a push. That's State, Gianna Toretta. Penn State, the boys going back to what they need to do, gain shots down low, creating those, causing some fouls. Just their second and their putbacks aren't falling down either. Need to start knocking those down. And the inbound thrown right away. Newman, it's a 2v2. Newman does it all herself, misses the layup. Her sister gets the offensive rebound. Crozier's effort won't go. The ball is still loose. Newman's got it again. Gives it to Columna, Toretta for three. Well short, and the rebound controlled by Penn State Du Bois in Tara Lemer, and they try to go now. Here is Tere, and she turns it away. Columna driving with her left, that was beautiful. 
Said it best, it was beautiful over two Penn State, the boys defenders. Here's Bauer. Stewart gives it up. It works its way around. Now they try the inside. Thrown away again, out of bounds to Penn State Lehigh Valley. That's just not a smart possession from Penn State to boys. They're passing tonight, it looks a little bit off. Yeah, nine turnovers so far. A lot of those have come on miscommunications, but it also is the just straight press defense. We're always gonna have a player in your face mindset by Coach Lori Carrillo's squad. Penn State Du Bois has been held at four points for about four minutes now. Penn State Lehigh Valley up at 17 and continuing to build. Here is Giracello to Neal, looking for help. She gets it, goes up strong. Excellent effort there. Mia Johnson gets two and the lead's 15. Still no backing off the full court pressure. Bowser. And now it's calmed down by Ture. Around to Hyde, to the inside. That jumper rolls around and good for Natalie Bowser and that ends the Lehigh Valley run. 19-6, Giracello, a minute five left in quarter one. Neal, underneath, here's Offing. Good cut by Mia Johnson, can't get it to fall. Offensive rebound is tapped out. Chloe Cassidy, same spot. Air ball this time. And Penn State Du Bois on the move. Ture going one against four, kicks it out. Shaw tries a three, can't get it to fall. Held at two points so far tonight. And 0 for four from beyond the arc. Shaw's got it again, gets rid of Neal. Top of the key, Ture. She'll try a three, also no good. Rebound, last touched by Mia Johnson. It'll stay here, five to shoot for Du Bois. I think that these Penn State Du Bois guards need to play with more, not like toughness, but just like pull the trigger on some of these shots. Sometimes they're about a little hesitant to pull the trigger. The inbound is turned over. Shot clock is still on. It's a three, about a three second differential. Here comes Chloe Cassidy. Tried to bounce it into Neal and it's turned over to Bois. And then there's a foul against Someone in white, so Du Bois is likely going to have a chance at the last shot. Chance for the last possession, too. That foul was on Gabby Girasello for Penn State Lehigh Valley, and there you get a look at Pat Lewis on your camera. He told us before the game it's year 47 for him in coaching basketball. Penn State Du Bois in the bonus, so foul shots here, and the first one is good. That time Rebecca Martin knocks it down, so. It will actually be Lehigh Valley who will get the last possession of the first half. Did not realize Du Bois was in the bonus. To finish our point on Coach Lewis, very experienced basketball coach and one of the more exciting coaches to talk to pregame, would you say, Dan? Yeah, he was really exciting to talk about. Very funny guy, too. And what did you say, Joey, one of your favorite, more entertaining favorite coaches to talk to? He really was. I mean, he let us pick his starting five, and, uh, you know, we had some great fun, good conversations. He told us that... His recruiting area, here's Offing, too strong. Offensive rebound, Mia Johnson at the buzzer is good. That's the end of the first quarter. Penn State Lehigh Valley 21 to eight over Penn State Du Bois. But uh, the biggest thing that Coach Lewis had to tell us was the difference in recruiting area between Penn State Lehigh Valley and Penn State Du Bois. He said the, where he lives, there is one high school for the entire yeah. county. And the next nearest high school is 26 miles away. And he asked us here, where did we go to high school here? And I said Emmaus, and you obviously went to William Allen. And he said, imagine Lehigh County only having one high school. How many high schools are at Lehigh County? We have oh. Parkland, Allen, Central, like, uh, close to yeah. 20. So that is just a crazy stat. And, you know, he only has 10 players on his roster. But they are a competitive team. And five of them being freshmen, this team is going to be good in a couple of years. Yeah, they just need, I think, really time to develop, too, right now, Joey. That's what it comes down to. So they need just time to develop, develop that chemistry. I mean, a lot of these Penn State Lehigh Valley players have been together for years. So once they start to develop, it's going to be a little bit more exciting to watch for them right now. But I just have one thing to pick, say to you. I picked a starting five for him, just so everybody knows at home. <laughs> you didn't pick the starting five, but your pen also did. So Yeah, I at least brought a functioning pen to our I did not. Huddle. I did not. <laughs> I had to use Joey's pen, but yeah. But... 
I think right now what Penn State the boys needs to do, you saw a little bit of getting back to it, but their shot, their putbacks were falling down. They were getting inside the paint a little bit, showing off that physical physicality down low too. They just need to start knocking down those shots inside. 21-8. It's doable for Penn State Du Bois, but they've got to adapt and create more on the offensive end, whether that's going inside to Natalie Bowser or fighting for second chance buckets with Kelsey Stewart. They've got to have a presence on the inside because if you continue to miss your threes, getting in a transition game with Penn State Lehigh Valley is a recipe for disaster as yeah. the first bucket of quarter two is no good attempted bucket, excuse me, from Hillary Offing, but here's Newman. Back to Offing, who's gonna fly right in. And she comes up short again. Offensive rebound by Newman, no good. And Du Bois now trying to get out of that. They get a good stop to start the second quarter. And now they look for a transition move with Lemur. Moves it wide for Martin. Works its way back to Shaw. Around the horn it goes, Lemur. Now Miller, Milliron. Shaw, shot clock at seven. Is Du Bois aware of it? Yes, they are. Good drive. Comes up short. Offensive rebound fought for. Jump ball. Possession arrow favors Du Bois. It'll stay here. Uh, we are going to have a foul. No, shot clock at 20. Excuse me. Hard to hear with the headphones on. So it is a jump ball. Possession arrow to Du Bois. 20 seconds on the shot clock. I cleared it up for myself and all our viewers at home. Martin to inbound, Milliron driving on Newman, she'll give it up. Kephart into the corner, she gets it back now. Milliron with eight to shoot. They go to the inside, Bowser kicks it wide. Shot clock at two, it's gotta go, and it does! One of the toughest shots of the night from Francis Milliron, but it goes. You're right, Francis Milliron with a very Tough shot, but gets it to go. Newman, Columna's open for three. No good that time. Rebound fought for, tapped around six or seven times. Du Bois eventually gets it. So another defensive stop to start quarter two. Can they break the press? Yep, they get across and a foul on number five in white, Sammy Columna. So Penn State Du Bois with a little bit of more energy to start quarter two. Yeah. A, lot, a ton of more energy, and it, what, what I have noticed too, Joey, what you said, that they need to start, what we've both been saying, they need to start winning those opportunities down low, and they've been better rebounding the past few possessions. You don't want to give Lehigh Valley second and third chance opportunities, and then on your offensive end, you've got to be able to score, but if you can't, you got to control the boards. Here's a three, Shaw, no good, rebound controlled there by Newman, and she's off to the races with her sister in support. Offing as well as an option. She wants to do it herself. Probably should have passed in that situation. Du Bois will get it back. So four stops for Penn State Du Bois to start quarter two. And now they're in transition. Francis Milliron. She's doubled. Fires it across the court. Kephart tries a three. Knocks it down. And or it's a two. So Penn State Du Bois with a long two. They're within nine now. So that bucket good from Sherry Kephart. They've been breaking that press defense the past few possessions, Joey. Coach Lewis with some mid-quarter adjustments. That one off the window, good. Sammy Columna, her second bucket. And a 30-second timeout taken by Coach Lori Khalil and Penn State Lehigh Valley. They are up 23 to 12, 7.40 to go in the second quarter. The second quarter in terms of numbers right now, Beaver, or Du Bois, excuse me, Penn State Du Bois is winning. Uh, only allowed one bucket so far for Lehigh Valley, so the adjustments there, but coming out of this timeout, it's important you score here. It is important you score here. Just continue to claw and punch your way back into this one. Penn State Lehigh Valley has thrown a lot of different looks defensively at you with this press. You never know what player is going to come across and get in your face. So it makes an offense very uncomfortable. But they've done a good job offensively so far, finding the open person, breaking through this press defense, finding good shots to take, driving inside, winning down, crash, winning down low, crashing the boards. Since I misspoke and included Penn State Beaver in this contest, let's highlight them. They are the only team to beat Penn State Lehigh Valley in the conference so far this season. It was an 89-78 win for Penn State Beaver. So there is their highlight of the night. They got a win. And last year, Penn State Lehigh Valley did the double on them. So that must have been a really good win for Beaver. Those two will face off again later on this season. And Newman hits the court. No foul called. 
Thrown into Newman now via Columna. It works its way back to Newman. She got bumped, no call again. And Du Bois with a stop. So that's five stops on six possessions. The only downside is they just had a traveling violation. 11 turnovers for the boys so far, Joey, in the first half. That's not good. No. They have 12 points and 11 turnovers, so that, ne that needs to change if they're going to keep themselves competitive in this contest. Because they haven't played poorly, they just haven't been able to get shots to go, and their own errors, as Penn State Lehigh Valley now has one of their own. And here comes the next line change for Penn State Lehigh Valley. Checking back in is Crozier, Mia Johnson, along with Chloe Cassidy, Trinity Neal, and Gabby Giracello. So something to mention about this group is she's including Crozier, or Crozier now instead of Hillary Offing, who just exited the court. So it is, it is five for five, but it's a new five for five. Du Bois with a three here. Good. So that's back-to-back -back shots in that area for Kephart. One on the last possession was a two. This one's a three. All of a sudden, they're within eight. First three ball of the night for the boys, too. They had some good looks, just couldn't get in the go. And now a turnover by Penn State Lehigh Valley. Turned right back over as Chloe Cassidy came flying in. And she's off to the races. Crozier, who plays a five, but is hanging out at the top of the key here. And Gabby Giracello with a walk. So three, the last three possessions, turnovers. And still, for Penn State Lehigh Valley, only two buckets in this quarter. The rest, Penn State Du Bois has stopped them on, and they've had close to nine possessions down there. So defensive adjustments really working for Coach Lewis's side. Here is Du Bois now looking for more points. Milliron throws it inside. Two points good from Natalie Bowser. It's a six-point game. Good adjustment adjustments made by Coach Lewis. Cassidy, Crozier. Lehigh Valley desperately in need of a bucket. As Du Bois is on a run here. Crozier again a five playing up top. She fires it inside. Giracello had to really work to keep that possession alive. Now she really works her way to the bucket. Too strong. Another stop for Du Bois. They can cut it to three here on this possession possibly. Milliron. Shaw's left alone for three. There it is! And Penn State Du Bois is within a possession. And now he wants to take a 30-second timeout to let his ladies catch their breath. They've really battled here in quarter two. They really have battled so far. And Lori Khalil is going to go back to a different starting five to, or a different lineup too. So she's going to go back to her starters. But just great find find there just knocks down the three cuts the lead all the way down to 23 to 20 just beautiful offensive possessions to pass few few for Penn State the boys and for Shannon Shaw she had about five or six three-pointers in that first quarter and maybe one or two already here in quarter two that wouldn't fall she gets that one nothing but net when you see buckets like that go in, it feeds your confidence. And then they have, I think it's eight stops on 10 possessions in the Lehigh Valley end in this second quarter. They are getting confident now, and yeah. you can see the true colors of this Du Bois team. Well, I said they needed to start stop hesitating when they were pulling up for their shots, especially particularly their guards. They were hesitating a little bit. Just let it show, just shoot. They were Their first three-pointer was made in the second quarter. So now they're getting, like you mentioned, gaining a ton of confidence, continuing to battle their way back. But Penn State Lehigh Valley just needs to get back to controlling the tempo. Toretta's three off the mark. Look at Hillary offing, and she puts it up for two. So Crozier, Crozier got taken out quickly, and Hillary offing quickly back into the score sheet with her second bucket of the night. And then Shaw double teamed. That's a turnover. So fresh out of the Lehigh Valley timeout, they have four points. And Naya Newman gets that two, and the lead's right back up to seven. Thrown inbounds to Bowser. Kephart. Bowser. Shaw, does she have two in a row? Oh, she does. Shannon Shaw's getting hot. Back-to-back -back freeze for Shannon Shaw. Now they're knocking down those three-pointers. There's Columna. Naya Newman can't answer. Rebound controlled that time from Du Bois and Tara Leaner thrown ahead. Newman saves it. It's a steal. Lehigh Valley in transition. Newman's floater bounces around, won't go. Hillary offing, being a monster on the inside, kicks it to Columna. Took too many steps. Another turnover by Penn State Lehigh Valley. 
And we mentioned that the new faces of this Lehigh Valley team, but they have a ton of experienced players as well. But you can see the mini growing pains on display in this first half. They aren't as dominant as we're used to seeing them, and they they have to make some adjustments. And they have a four-point lead, but they aren't the same team we saw last year. No, they're not the same team that we saw last year. Just have to make those adjustments. Mill Iron, Shaw, does she have three in a row? I dare ask. Not that time, though. Newman, she's got Columna ahead of her. Her sister's joining in. It goes to Columna, and she scores. So Sammy Columna's third bucket of the night, and the lead's back to six. And Columna with a steal, saves it. Newman, too strong. Rebound from Shaw, lost the handle. It'll stay with Lehigh Valley, 27 to shoot. And we'd like to mention that for Lori Khalil tonight, she is joined by her assistant, Tanasia Smith, and her guest coaches from Penn State Lehigh Valley, Cindy Evans and Tiffany Valadez, who Derek will have the pleasure of talking to at halftime at some point. We also want to give a shout out to the Southern Lehigh High School cheerleaders led by head coach Sam Grimm. They are in attendance tonight. A steal off the inbound for Du Bois, so another stop on the defensive end for them. They have really put together a good defensive game plan for the second quarter. Down by six, can they find something on the offensive end? They look to their big one inside, Bowser can't get it to fall. Second chance opportunity, also no good that time from Lemur. Lehigh Valley now looking for points. Newman, good move. Couldn't get it to fall though. There she is on the offensive end, Hillary Offing. Hillary Offing with a great put puff, back down low. Lead grows to eight. Number for Du Bois. Cannot cash in, miss layup underneath. It'll stay here though. For Tara Lemur, she's got to make that one. You're not going to get a wide open layup every trip down against Penn State Lehigh Valley. No, and they had, they've had a lot of open looks tonight. They just are not falling down. They've had them all over the court, mid range, below the basket, three point. So you got to start knocking some of them down, be a little bit more consistent. They were as close as three a couple minutes ago. Lehigh Valley, out of the timeout, has been able to build that lead back to eight as we approach 3.18 to go in the second. Corner three, Shannon Shaw, too strong. Rebound controlled again by Du Bois, and it'll stay with them, 10 to shoot on the shot clock. We want to give you a reminder to stay tuned following the conclusion of this game, the men's edition of Penn State Du Bois and Penn State Lehigh Valley. And Penn State Lehigh Valley's men's team also five and two. That should be another exciting matchup, but we're only in quarter two here, so this one obviously still a good game, and stay tuned in as Du Bois trying to get points. Shot clock did reset, so did they turn it over? It doesn't matter. Here comes Newman in transition. That was a clean block from Shannon Shaw, and it'll stay with Penn State Lehigh Valley. Good job getting back there. Shannon Shaw doing it all, shooting a three ball offensively well and getting back on Defense, blocking the shot. Hey. 20 to shoot for Penn State Lehigh Valley. 30 now as they reset the shot clock and they're gonna run it off a couple seconds. There might be a clock issue. Trying to get everything sorted out here. So they're content with 257 and 26 on the shot clock. That's what we'll go with. The inbound to Toretta. Into Offing, who's had a big second quarter. Fouled that time, but it's offensive foul. Saying he, she used her elbow to initiate the contact. So turnover by the Lehigh Valley Lions. Du Bois takes over. And our next line change. Look for this. So look for this current five to bounce back for Penn State Lehigh Valley. They were the ones that were responsible for giving up that run to Penn State the boys. They look better organized already on the press, but Du Bois does a really nice job at breaking it. Mill iron. Oh, that was straight up by Aliyah Crozier, but not to the agreement of the referees or Lori Khalil. So two shots coming at the free throw line for Francis Milliron. Coach Khalil not too pleased with that call, but 
First one no good from Mill Iron, and you can see there Coach Khalil asking for an explanation, but I don't know, I thought it was a pretty good block. Depends what angle you see it from. Derek's neutral. Second one coming for Mill Iron. 0 for 2 trip, so, but the offensive rebound was fought for, but a good job there by Mia Johnson to take it away. So an empty trip for Du Bois. Giracello now with her left. Too strong again. Neal and company fighting for it. It goes through the legs of Bow Bowser, and it ends up being a jump ball. Possession era will stay here with Penn State Lehigh Valley. Two and a half to go in quarter two. 31 23, Lehigh Valley on top. They had as big of a lead as 15 in the first quarter. Du Bois is clawed back in the second. Basketball is a game of runs. These two have both experienced them in this first half. They inbound it to Trinity Neal. Jump stop, turnover. Jump ball as the possession arrow favors Du Bois. Shannon Straub being one of the focal points right now in physical presence as well. What's the biggest difference here in the second quarter from Penn State Du Bois for you, Derek? Confidence, especially on the offensive end. Works its way across. Stewart. That one's a deep two, no good from Stewart. Works its way to Shaw. To the inside to Bowser. Top of the key, Stewart tries again. Again, she's unsuccessful. Ture can't get one to fall either. Shaw, keeping the offensive possession alive. Multiple offensive rebounds. Bowser's triple teamed. Shaw for three. She got it! Lori Khalil's not going to be happy with that. That was a second, third chance opportunity. Wants her team to start rebounding better. The third triple of the quarter for Shannon Shaw. Neal tries to answer unsuccessfully. Du Bois down by five. 90 seconds to go in quarter two. Here comes Shaw again. Penn State Du Bois, all of their triples in this quarter. Three of them belonging to number 10. Here's Stewart looking for help. She throws it away to Crozier. Giracello to Trinity Neal, who's all alone for two. That's what Lehigh Valley's bread and butter basketball is. Defense fuels the offense. Absolutely. 33-26 now, a minute five to go in the second. We're gonna get substitution here and Hillary Offing would like to come back into the game. Not yet though. And there was an inadvertent horn, so referees are trying to sort that out. Du Bois would like to sub if they're allowed to. And they are going to be granted the substitution, which will grant Hillary Offing's return to the ball game, replacing Leah Crozier for Penn State Lehigh Valley. 30 seconds to shoot. It's a fresh shot clock. Du Bois has the possession. And it's a traveling violation, not a long possession. And now a chance for Penn State Lehigh Valley to cash in the takeaway. 58 seconds left in the first half. Who does Lehigh Valley want the ball to go to on this possession? And do they go for a quick shot or do they want to spend some time off the clock? They wanted to go quick and offing left it short and they turn it back to Penn State Du Bois. Multiple turnovers in the last eight seconds. Twenty-five seconds on the shot clock. Thrown in, and Neil is there immediately. It'll stay with Du Bois. They've struggled to get the inbounds in. They've struggled to break the press, but it's gotten better in the second quarter. But now they have hit a lull in the last 10, 15 seconds, and Penn State Lehigh Valley trying to end the half on a positive note, but Du Bois has other ideas. Here comes Mill Iron, and that ball caroms out of bounds. It'll stay here. 47 seconds to go, 19 on the shot clock for the visitors. This is a Pretty big possession for Penn State, the boys. Might be their last possession going into the half. You want to end it on a high note, get some points. 
Absolutely. They look for the inside route to Bowser, but a foul preceded it. Coach Khalil frustrated. Definitely is what you described her, Joey. A fierce competitor, Lori Khalil is. Well, I think she's got a case. She's had multiple t occasions down in her end where her players have felt contact and the whistles haven't gone their way. And here is a shot left short by Milliron. About a 3.5 second differential shot clock game clock, but Giracella wants to go quick. Neal, now they'll kick it out. Cassidy pump fakes and drives, lays it up and in. Beautiful possession from Penn State Lehigh Valley. Lead grows to nine. Shot clock is off for Du Bois. It's a one on one here. Now it becomes even at five on five. Kephart to the inside. Bowser can't get it to fall. Rebound to Offing. They have five seconds. Thrown to Giracello. Can they get one off? Giracello. Neal. Jumper at the horn. Good! Trinity Neal builds the lead to 11 to end the first half. Penn State Lehigh Valley 37. Penn State Du Bois 26. Derek will have Coach Lori Khalil momentarily. That a huge bucket for the hosts going into the locker rooms here at halftime. And Derek will await Penn State Lehigh Valley head coach Lori Khalil. She's going to do some quick coaching. But that is a really good end to an exciting first half here at Cedar Crest College with Penn State Lehigh Valley. Le biggest lead was 15. It came as close as three for Penn State Du Bois getting back into it. And then they end the second quarter on a little run that builds the lead to 11. You see Coach Khalil there talking to her senior leaders in Sammy Columna, Aliyah Crozier, and Gianna Toretta. That trio, so good in both offense and defense. And you see the Southern Lehigh High School cheerleaders putting on their halftime show. And Lori looks content. She's ready to head into a halftime interview with Lori Khalil. Here, Coach Khalil. Coach, back and forth, first half. What stood out to you? Yeah, I mean, uh, Duke boys, they, they play tough, and, you know, they're really working the ball um, on offense. So, I mean, that's ma it's making us play defense for at least 20 seconds. So, um, but, you know, we'll be all right. 37 points and a half, we'll, we'll be okay. What's going to be the message to your players in the locker room? At half. What's that? I'm sorry. What's going to be your message to your team at the half? We just got to keep the pace and we got to get inside their seams. Um, they're playing a zone, so we just got to attack the gaps, um, keep moving the ball, and we'll be all right. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you so much, guys. Joey, back to you. All right, Derek, thank you. And Coach Khalil's side up by 11 at the break. We are going to take a short break and be back momentarily.
All right, and welcome back here to Cedar Crest College. It's halftime, Penn State Lehigh Valley up by 11 at the break, and Derek is getting ready to talk to Penn State Lehigh Valley Athletic Director Rich Fatzinger. Derek? Down here with Athletic Director Rich Fatzinger. Rich, how does it feel to have another good season of Penn State Lehigh Valley basketball from both men's and women's? Yeah, we're really excited. We, we were able to get back to Cedar, Cedar Crest and can't thank them enough for letting us get back in here. It's a great atmosphere here because it's a little bit small, but it fills the crowd and you can see the energy that it brings. Brings a lot of energy and excitement, you're right. What are some of your takeaways from the first half from the women's side? I thought, you know, first talk about Dubois, I thought they spaced the floor real well. I mean, our pressure is really tough and they're doing a pretty nice job of, of moving the ball, getting into an open player, and they're making some good shots. Um, as far as us, you know, our quickness really makes a difference. Um, plus, with uh, Hillary on the inside, um, it's a good inside-outside game. I asked you this a lot last year. I'm going to ask you it again. Do you ever get that urge to come back to coaching? No, it, and it's still the same. I, I really enjoy the prep stuff. Um, don't necessarily enjoy the bus rides or that type of thing, but I, I miss it. I'm not going to lie. I do miss it, but I also know all of the work involved in it, and I got two great coaches that are willing to spend the time to make these kids you know, a good, bring together a good basketball team. Thanks, Rich. You're welcome. Joey, back to you. All right, Derek, thank you. And we're going to have him back in the booth momentarily. We'll send it to another break and be back here momentarily. All right, and welcome back to Cedar Crest College, where Penn State Lehigh Valley is up 37-26 over Penn State Du Bois. It's the women's edition. The men's is following the conclusion of this one, and we apologize for any dead air during halftime, but we are back now. Shout out to Al DiCarlo, and he's at Northwestern Lehigh tonight, and uh, we have Dave Micah with us here tonight. So, Derek, uh, we've got a, a good crew here, and uh, I know someone that you did a lot of games with is not with us tonight, so... <laughs> How do you feel about our new crew here tonight? Well, you know, I'm enjoying being in the booth with you tonight, Joey. That's for <laughs> sure, you know. I won't mention any names, but, you know, we had a very back-and-forth first half, you know. I mean, Penn State, the boys, they fought and clawed their way back. I just think they missed some opportunities, uh, especially, like, open shots, really good shots to take. They're just not falling down. On the Penn State, Lehigh Valley side of things, you know, we are used to this up-tempo, press defense, pedal to the metal at all times, 110% on the both ends of the court. What has really stood out to me, though, is the turnovers. You know, Penn State, the boys, has about 15 to 16 turnovers compared to Penn State's f uh, only four of their turnovers tonight. So the score right now could be a little bit closer if they just were able to cut back on those turnovers throughout that first half, you know. So, but with this game, I think what the final about 20 minutes is going to come down to is whoever is going to start knocking down shots more consistently and controlling the boards and crashing the boards at a consistent high rate, you know. Absolutely, and uh, one thing to mention about this Penn State Du Bois team is 
they were down by 15 points in the late first quarter. And um, they've clawed their way all the way back to as close as three minutes. And, um, you know, they the lead's now at 11, but they got as close as three. So they had a really good start to the second quarter. And then at the end, it got back to a little bit of their sloppy basketball that they played in the first, turning it over, not being able to break the press. So how do they get back to the basketball they played the first five minutes of the second quarter? Because as long as they do that, they're going to keep themselves in this game, and it's going to be a competitive one. But if they continue to turn it over, can't break the press, Lehigh Valley is going to have a runaway in the second half. I think what you saw when they were breaking that press defense, Joey, was when they were a little bit more decisive with the ball. They weren't hesitating where to go with the ball. Whenever you saw them go to, go to their, not their first option, their second option, that's when they were turning the ball over. So be decisive where to go. Do not hesitate. You, there can't really be any hesitation against this Penn State Lehigh Valley defense. You've got to be decisive. Know where you're going with the ball. Know where your offense, other offensive players are on the court. So be quick with the ball. Continue the rebound. And knock down shots down low. You know, and your foul shots. That's how you're going to be able to call your way back into this. And control their de defensive boards. Don't get Penn State Lehigh Valley second and third chance opportunities like you saw a little bit towards that end of that second quarter. That's what how Penn State was able to stretch your lead back up to 11 where it was in the first the first quarter. So you got to be able to control the defensive rebounding too. One thing to notice about this Penn State Lehigh Valley offense so far tonight is they came into the game averaging about three point. Uh, they're averaging about four or five three-point uh, field goals a game. They've been held right at that mark in the first half. So in the second half, do you think they are going to look to add a little bit more presence from behind the arc, or do you think they're content with playing a paint battle right now? I think they're winning the paint battle right now. I think, you, But you saw Penn State Lehigh Valley in that first half pick and choose where they want to take their three balls, and when they were picking and choosing, they were going down. So don't take those good three-point opportunities when you have an open paint look. Take those great three-ball three ball opportunities because whenever they were getting paint touches, it opened up things from beyond the arc for them right now, and that's how they were able to really stretch their lead, picking and choosing where they're going to shoot the three-ball at a high percentage. Absolutely, and as we tick down to a minute left before we start the third quarter, these two teams are in a competitive battle. Du Bois is hanging in there, and if they can start the third quarter off well, they can get themselves back in this game. Penn State Lehigh Valley is going to look to head off to the races and open up the scoreline like they usually do. Lehigh Valley on a two-game winning streak, looking to extend that to a third straight win. They are in good position right now, but game is still very much so early on, and their last game they played was at Penn State Wilkes-Barre. That was on the 28th of November, and they put up 95 points and won by 40. So this team definitely has the potential to get into a high-scoring game. And, you know, last year at halftime, they were averaging around 40, 45 a game. They're at 37 right now. We mentioned that they're a little bit of a younger team this year. They have their core senior leaders and that familiarity about them. But y you definitely see a difference in this team, and whether that's on – they're turning it over a little bit more. They aren't scoring at will as much as they did last year. They haven't scored as much in transition tonight that we are used to seeing. So there's definitely parts to this Lehigh Valley team that they are still trying to iron out. But the one thing that hasn't changed is that relentless defense. No, and their defense, no matter what kind of coaching scheme or philosophy you're going to throw out, it always travels. It will continue to travel with you home, away, neutral site. And that's what we've grown accustomed to right now. Second half underway. Penn State Lehigh Valley starting with the possession. It didn't last long. They turn it over. Columna tried to find Offing and off to the races goes Du Bois, but cleaning up for her mistake, Sammy Columna with a steal. Toretta to the inside to Newman. Feeds Offing again. Just left it short, but Hillary Offing has been the answer on the inside. Toretta thought about it and then took a walk. And that's a turnover for Penn State Lehigh Valley. So Two stops defensively for Du Bois to start quarter three. That's a good good uh, start to the quarter for them, but they've got to turn it into offense now. And here is Shannon Shaw. Three triples in the first half. They'd love to keep her going. She got triple team there, and Naya Newman with Columna for support. 2v1, Sammy Columna fouled, and Coach Khalil... She is finally pleased to have that call. She felt that they didn't get too many whistles in the first half. She's almost saying thank you. 
for that one. So a trip to the line for Columna. You get to look at the replay here, and she absolutely got fouled. She did, no doubt about it. A lot of contact. First one good. Perhaps pleading her case to the officials is starting to pay off. One a two trip for number five in white, Sammy Columna. And now rebound was to Bowser, and they quickly break it. Kephart. And it works its way to Milliron. Into the corner. Back to Milliron, top of the key. Offing read that like a book, but met the body first, and that was a foul as they tried to look inside to Natalie Bowser. And one thing to notice about Penser Du Bois tonight is their bus trip here is about five hours long. So sitting on a bus for five hours, maybe a little bit more because of the weather tonight, and then having to go up and down the court with this Lehigh Valley team, it's, diff it's difficult, it's tough. It's, you know, there's no hiding from it. And, but they've done a really nice job at adjusting to it as that deep two is good that time from Edson. But to make my point, Coach Lewis, we asked him about the conditioning of his team and he wasn't worried. But do you think it's lived out to be true? Yeah, I think they've done a good job at times. You see them, you have seen them as the three is no good by Toretta. You've seen them get keep up with the pace of this tempo and beat this defense at times. It's just, it's not really more consistent enough for long periods of stretch for them to take the lead or tie the game. As a Dubois turnover, Shannon Shaw too close to the baseline and it went out of bounds, so. Columna will wait to inbound to Nia Newman. Penn State Lehigh Valley's lead is 10. Early moments of the third quarter. And we are back underway. Nia Newman at the point. Looking to drive. She'll kick Toretta. Missed a three last trip down here. Crozier's got it, fires it inside. Newman blocked. Bowser in there with the rebound as she always is. Here comes Mill iron in transition, count it, and a foul. So going to the line for a chance at a three-point play, Francis Mill iron. Pat Lewis fired up on that side. You saw him put his fist bump, fist bump down and had a ton of energy, but just great job. They had the numbers advantage. Well, not really the numbers advantage. It was a good job of fighting down three Penn State Le Le Lehigh Valley defenders and drawing the contact and out for a three-point play. They're going to need starting to do more of that if they want to come away with try to tie the game. The Lion cannot complete the three-point play. Columna with the rebound going in transition into the corner. Toretta has Edson on her. Crozier. Columna. 15 to shoot for Lehigh Valley. Toretta, you don't want to leave her open. Comes up well short there. Newman to her sister. Fouled, two shots coming at the line for Nia Newman. <laughs> Nia Newman's first on the way is good. We highlighted before the game, Penn State Lehigh Valley only shooting 60% as a team at the foul line through seven games of the season. So definitely a place they want to improve upon. They go two for two here with Newman and the lead's back to 10. Du Bois breaks out of the press quick. Poked from behind by Newman, it'll stay here with Du Bois in possession as Shannon Shaw had no idea it was coming from behind. So 23 seconds to go on the shot clock. Du Bois will inbound it deep underneath. And they look to the inside. Quickly out, Edson can't get it to fall. Bowser couldn't get the rebound. It'll somehow kindly fall back to her. And then Toretta with the, t with the takeaway. Toretta with her eyes up looking for someone to pass to. Crozier's the answer. Too strong, no good. Nia Newman's got it. To her sister Nyla. Off the window, too strong. Nia's got the offensive rebound. Rejected by Bowser who holds the rebound strong. Double teamed, foul called against Nia Newman. And here comes four substitutions for Lehigh Valley. So checking back into the game for Penn State Lehigh Valley, Mia Johnson, Trinity Neal, um, Chloe Cassidy, and Gabby Girocello. Sammy Columna is the only one to stay out there. 
Ball is in play, Lehigh Valley, no one is back, but how about the hustle by Trinity Neal? And then there's a whistle. Coach Khalil again, a little frustrated with another whistle and I think she has a good case there. I don't think Trinity Neal even came close to contact, but that's not my job. So Du Bois has it underneath, inbounded to Bowser. Edson will jump it off the window too strong. A fight for it on the inside and Chloe Cassidy took a shot in the face. And they call the foul on Chloe Cassidy, so she comes out the worst of it. Coach Khalil is going to take a 30 second timeout and she is in pure frustration right now. Chloe Cassidy is in pain coming off the court and she's the one guilty of the foul. And for the second straight replay, I think Coach Khalil has got a really good case. She does have a case there though. I think this game has been physical down low as well, but can't control what's being called, but shout out. Good job by Penn State Lehigh Valley to it is adjusting and keeping their composure of how this game is being officiated tonight. I think the biggest thing that's frustrating from a Lehigh Valley perspective is in a game like this where it's close and Du Bois is on the outside knocking in, potential to cut the deficit and get right back in this game, fouls like this that are being called will eventually lead you into the penalty. And you know, these are two fouls as Coach Khalil says, five fouls at the seven minute mark. So you know how she feels about it. But yeah, I mean, they're close to the penalty already and yeah. we haven't played three minutes. So I think that's the frustrating aspect from Penn State Lehigh Valley is first free throw is good at the line from Rebecca Martin. It's just if the, those two fouls weren't called, they're at three and you know, three, three fouls to two fouls it's at the seven minute mark. Two for two trip for Martin. So I think that's why she's frustrated. But you've got to play you got to play your game. And that's what Lehigh Valley is going to try to do here. Columna to the inside. Mia Johnson off the window, no good. Same team, offensive rebound, and they collide and lose it. And then that's a traveling violation called. Coach Khalil was the first one to see it, too. I think she might have been worried that there was going to be another foul called. Trinity Nia will inbound it to Girasello. 6.46 to go in the third. Columna, foul line extended, over to Neal. Lehigh Valley would love a bucket right now. Ease the tensions. Instead, they travel. So it's getting sloppy here in the early stages of quarter three as Johnson turns it over. Du Bois will inbound it underneath and will have to go against the relentless press of Penn State Lehigh Valley. Inbounded to Mill Iron. Ahead to Bowser. She's aware of the three players coming at her. Gives it to Milliron. Cross court. Does find someone there, Kelsey Stewart. 16 to shoot. Stewart to the inside. Giracello read that. Another turnover by Du Bois. Giracello moving quick. Looking for options. Neal is one. Columna, open three. Bang! Sammy Columna. Big three there for Lehigh Valley. First three for quite a while for them, Penn State Lehigh Valley. Joey, you said big time three by Sam Columna. Du Bois trying to find an answer. Five against five. Here is their three point shooter, Shannon Shaw. She gives it up to Mill Iron, works its way around. Kelsey Stewart tries a three. Can't answer. Rebound called. Rebound to Shannon Shaw. Now Mill Iron drives. No good. Columna the board. We have Alley going quick. Columna intercepted by Stewart. Intended for Neal. Mill Iron. Thrown away and Columna misread it. Deep two on the way from Shaw. Too strong. Giracello the board. End to end action. Giracello drives. She is fouled. Two shots will be coming for Gabby G. Foul goes against Francis Mill Iron. Mention it, Joey. Hard foul is a foul. She'll go to the line to shoot two. 
Coach Khalil is going to do a line change before the foul shot. She'll take everyone off but the shooter, obviously. Back into the game for Lehigh Valley. Crozier, the Newman sisters, and Gianna Toretta. Giracello is first. Too strong. There's one bugaboo tonight I think Coach Khalil has is some missed foul shots tonight. We highlighted it, and there's an 0 for 2 trip from Giracello, but the hustle from Newman keeping it alive. It did go off of her last, so it'll be turned over to Penn State Two Boys. 5.15 to go in the third. And a steal off the inbounds. Newman going up strong, rejected, but a foul. And Newman hit the deck hard that time. Natalie Bowser affected that shot. Newman will go to the line for two. She's smiling and laughing that one off. I'm not. That hurt. That looked like it hurt. <laughs> she got up right away, too. Toughness on display for her tonight. There hasn't been much offense in this third quarter, Derek. It's no. been a lot of turnovers, missed shots, and Nia misses another foul shot. That's three straight by the Lehigh Valley Lions. So scoring-wise, Lehigh Valley's been held to six points in this second er, second half, and so far Du Bois has been held to six points in the second half. So a very quiet quarter, but the second free throw goes for Nia Newman. Builds the lead to 12. Du Bois needs a run. They turn it over again. Newman to her sister. Nia's taken over, two points there. Timeout, Penn State to boys as the lead grows to 14 points. Relentless press, we talked about it. Du Bois cannot afford to turn the ball over time and time again. They've done it on the last four possessions. Yeah, a lot of turnovers tonight about in the 16, or about the 18 to 20 range turnover rise for the boys. They just need to play a little bit more careful with the basketball right now. Cause you know, Joey, they have, now Penn State Lehigh Valley has the biggest lead of the night with 14 and they then Penn State, the boys did a really good job of taking care of the basketball for a few possessions, and that's how they were able to get back into the game for a little bit. They were down as much as low as four points almost. So five minutes to go in the third. Penn State Lehigh Valley, despite not playing their best basketball in this quarter, has been able to cause chaos and create turnovers. They've turned it into points on their last two occasions. And now defensively, they are in position again. Can they break the press? No, they cannot. There's Nia Newman again. She's at every bit of action in this third quarter. Misses the layup, though. Bowser to board. Ture, and she's off to the races. Gets held up, and Shaw kicks it forward. They look underneath. Nia Newman again battling here in the third. Put back good by Bowser, and that is a huge two-point bucket for Penn State Du Bois. Four and a half to go. Nyla Newman to Giracello who drives baseline. And a foul called. That is team foul number five against Penn State Du Bois. And that means we will be shooting foul shots for Gabby Giracello. 0 for 2 on the night. First is good. Second is also good. The lead's 14 now. And they inbound it to the corner. They quickly break out. Ture gets stopped by Toretta and company. Throws it up for grabs. It's there with Stewart. Back to Ture across the court. Finds its way inside to Bowser. Good possession by Du Bois. Back-to-back -back buckets for Natalie Bowser. Yeah, back-to-back -back buckets, but they need to start getting some stops on the defensive side of the court. Natalie Bowser, a freshman who has broken the school record for points in a game and rebounds in the first five games of her career. Just tells you how good she is. Gabby Giracello with two more for Penn State Lehigh Valley. Ten players on the roster for Du Bois, five of which are freshmen. They are battling tonight, though, and there's two more points for Tara Lemer. So Du Bois hanging in there, but they need a stop. Crozier's jumper. There's an offensive rebound by Nyla Newman. Thrown away. 
There's a fight for it. Toretta's there first. Nyla Newman to her sister. Nia for three. No. Nyla's battling again. Last off of White, it'll go down to Du Bois. Second chance opportunity though there by Nia Newman. Unlucky to not get it to fall. Du Bois gets a stop. And they lob it in and no one was ready for it on the Du Bois end. Nyla Newman looking to drive, will drive, misses the layup. Multiple missed chances in this last couple of minutes in the third for Penn State Lehigh Valley. They could have this lead a lot larger than 12. Instead, Du Bois hanging in there. Ture to the three-point shooter, Shannon. Shaw looked underneath, couldn't find anyone. Turned over again. After beat, having three straight three, or not three straight, but three threes in that second quarter, Penn State Lehigh Valley has done a good job of always finding her on the court on the offensive end. It's been a quiet third quarter for Shannon Shaw. Nyla Newman will drive it. Toretta. Newman, jump stop shot, good. Nia Newman, this has been her quarter. Seven points in this third quarter from number 12 in white. And there's a travel against Kelsey Stewart. The turnovers are just killing Du Bois right now. It's just been killing them all night, but you mentioned Nia Newman. Coach Khalil needed a veteran presence and some one of her veteran leaders to take over, and she's done such a good job of doing that tonight. Coach Khalil told us before the game, you guys should be really excited to watch the Newman sisters. They have been on display tonight. Here's one of them, Nyla Newman, giving it up, though. Hillary Offing, too hot to handle. Du Bois gets a stop. 2.20 to go in the third. Here's a deep two off the mark that time, Rebecca Martin. Again, it's Nia Newman with the ball. Jump stop, throws it across the court to Toretta. Thought about driving, kicks it back to Newman. Toretta calling for it, she won't get it. Nyla Newman, Giracello. She kicks it to Offing. Shot clock at 10. Nyla Newman fading away, too strong. Gets her own miss. Drives inside. Hillary Offing off the window, no good. Nia Newman, no good. Four or five missed opportunities that are killing Coach Khalil's side. They're going to want that one back. They had a lot of open looks. Just couldn't get him to go. Oh, my. Here's Ture on the drive. Three-pointer on the way. Good. So Kelsey Stewart cashes in, brings Du Bois within 11. And how big was that missed possession down here by Penn State Lehigh Valley? Really big, Joey. They're going to want that one back. They've been doing such a good job of preventing runs tonight by just answering on the other end of the court when they needed to. Du Bois trying to get on a little run. They've been able to get defensive stops. And there's another one. Nyla Newman called for the offensive foul. Coach Khalil in disbelief again, as that is foul number six now against Lehigh Valley in the quarter. So it'll be Du Bois to inbound it. Shannon Shaw will be the inbounder on the court right now. Stewart, Ture, Rebecca Martin, Tara Lemer. They can't get it in. They do now. Martin bounces its over, way over to Ture. They force her backwards. There's Nia Newman again. It's been her quarter. Nia Newman is taking over. Nine points in the third. Thrown in. Martin. And the pocket is picked. Kalumna driving all the way. Fouled. Two shots coming. Again, though, turnovers by Penn State Du Bois. Over 20 turnovers now for Penn State Du Bois. So Sammy Kalumna will shoot two at the line. Team foul number six. Kalumna and just Newman just taking over this quarter, really just taking matters in their own hands. And that's what you want your returning players to do that have been with you for a long time, especially when you're not getting some of the calls that you've had, you wanted and all that. They've kept their composure and just continue to play their game tonight. One of two trip for Columna. There's a steal off the inbound again by Penn State Lehigh Valley. Here's Columna again, and she is fouled again. And she'll go right back to the line as that is team foul number seven. Third 
36 seconds to go in the third. Lehigh Valley's done a good job at building the lead here late on. 56-41 now. Two for two trip for Columna. The lead is now up to 16. The largest of the night, near steal. Therese in trouble. Shaw batted down. Great job. Guess who? Nia Newman. And now Neil tying it up at midcourt. It'll be a jump ball. Possession arrow stays with Dubois. But how about the third quarter by Nia Newman? Both ends of the court just showing off her skill set offensive and defensively. Really has a nose for the ball this quarter. So the largest lead of the night for Penn State Lehigh Valley at 16. Part of that is because their defense has just gotten takeaway take after takeaway. And Penn State Du Bois hasn't had an answer. Shaw will throw it in deep underneath. She gets it back, that three off the mark. Rebound to Crozier. Shot clock is off for Penn State Lehigh Valley. But you almost feel like they could still get a two for one because of their relentless defense. Columna's three is short. Rebound, stolen right back as I called it. Girasello on the baseline. Timeout taken by Lori Khalil with 12 and a half left in the third. Smart timeout by Coach Khalil. Saving that possession. Has a chance to go, like you mentioned, Joey, for a two for one. You usually, do, you usually don't get a two for one when the shot clock is off, but when your defense is as good as Penn State Lehigh Valley's is and you can get steals off of inbounds every single time, you're gonna set yourself up for two, v two for ones. Just have done such a good job Penn State Lehigh Valley has this quarter of just really playing relentless. I think, you know, you saw it in the first quarter, saw a little bit in the second quarter, but it almost has turned up a notch. So whatever Lori, Coach Lori Khalil said in that locker room to her players seems to be working. It wasn't too long ago that we said it was 6-6 in the third quarter. It, yeah. You know, Penn State Lehigh Valley was held to six, Du Bois was held to six, and we were in a turnover, turning it over up and down on each end of the court. They found their composure, has Penn State Lehigh Valley, but Du Bois still has yet to break out of that. You have 12 seconds left here in the third. You absolutely need a stop to end this quarter. But then to start the fourth quarter, you got to find a way to score. So for yeah. Penn State Du Bois, what's Coach Lewis saying right now? Obviously, the most important thing is a stop on this end. You don't want to give them any more points this quarter. But what's his message going into the fourth to try to will these girls to keep themselves in this contest? Right now, I think you go back to what you're doing in the middle of that second quarter. You just got to start figuring out how to break that press again and knock down shots, get open looks. But I think maybe fatigue starting to come into a little bit of a factor. Like we've, that was one of our concerns for Penn State to boys coming into the, tonight's contest, Joey. So you just got to figure that out, that how you were playing in that second quarter. The inbound play works to perfection. Aliyah Crozier with the two. Du Bois going to try to get it. Stolen away. Girasella wanted to shoot it, but the horn sounded first. End of the third. Penn State Lehigh Valley 59. Penn State Du Bois 41. We're going to take a quick break and have the final 10 when we come back. And welcome back here to Cedar Crest College. We've got Penn State Lehigh Valley women's basketball here on D11sports.com. It's currently an 18 point lead for the hosts in their first home game of the season. And they're looking good for a third straight win and looking to improve to 
um, six and two through the first eight games, but there are still 10 minutes to be played in Penn State Du Bois. We have seen little glimmers and little flickers of the potential this team has tonight, but this is a long uphill journey over the next 10 minutes if they're going to try to come back. Yeah, it, it, like you mentioned, it is an uphill journey. It's just that Penn State has, re Penn State Lehigh Valley, excuse me, has really picked up the tempo in that third quarter. Look for them to carry on. They have a ton of momentum. They're playing with a ton of confidence right now. And they are in full control of this game. Speaking of confidence, that was uh, Thierry A who went and picked the pocket there, but it was stolen right back. Crozier foul on extended. Can't get that one to fall. Thierry again battling for it. She is on the court right now. It'll be a jump ball. The arrow favors Du Bois. So an excellent job there by one of the five freshmen on this team, Haley Thierry. Tying up the Penn State Lehigh Valley player and earning Du Bois a possession. You can see that Du Bois has potential. They have confidence. They've got to find a way to score the bucket, the ball into the bucket. That's their biggest problem tonight. Ture gets help from Stewart. Wild shot won't go. Nia Newman, who took over in the third quarter, tallying nine points, multiple steals and rebounds. At the thick of it again there, and she gives it off to Toretta, who crosses half court now. Toretta to Columna. Columna, strong take, won't fall. Nyla Newman fighting in there. Jump ball, possession arrow now with Lehigh Valley. One thing I like about this Penn State Lehigh Valley team, Joey, is that they're competing no matter what the score is, no matter if they're trailing. They're up by a big margin. They're just playing their game, and they treat every possession like it's 0-0 from the opening tip. Because they know what will happen at practice tomorrow with Coach Khalil if they don't. And off the inbounds, it's good. Coach Khalil, the queen of drawing up inbound plays, and another one works to success. Leads 20 now. Here's Ture. At this point, Du Bois is just looking for some sort of confidence to take into the next part of their schedule. It's not an easy task, their next couple of games. Here's Shaw for three. Good, so she's got four on the night now, and that's a good confidence booster for number 10 in blue. And the next couple, the next couple for Penn State Du Bois is Penn State Brandywine, Penn State Schuylkill, Penn State Hazelton. That one controlled by Ture. We'll go back to how good those opponents are in a second as Ture looks to go coast to coast. Couldn't finish her layup. Crozier to Newman. Ahead to Toretta, who's driving and got blocked. So good job there going straight up by Natalie Bowser. A little body contact, but not going to get called. It'll stay with Lehigh Valley. But you've got Penn State Brandywine, who were top four in the league last season. That's the next game for Du Bois as Crozier's foul line jumper won't go. Then you have Penn State Schuylkill, who won the Penn State University Athletic Conference last year, beating Penn State Lehigh Valley. And then you have Penn State Hazleton, again, another team that was in um, the top five. So the next stretch for Du Bois is a very tough one. Columna's got a steal. Columna is all alone. Easiest two of her career. Thrown in, Nia Newman read it, but she couldn't get there in time. And they work it across to Lemur. Shaw, Ture. Mind you, stay tuned following the conclusion of this one. We have the men's edition of Du Bois against Lehigh Valley. Here's Nyla Newman, Columna for support. It'll end up in her hands, and Columna misses the layup again. Nyla Newman not giving up. Ture, ball is on the court. Nia Newman to Sammy Columna. Maybe that's the easiest two of her career. And Penn State Lehigh Valley is just taking over now. Full and control. another seal. Crozier to Columna. Toretta. Newman all. A little too much heat from Toretta. And the next line change for Lehigh Valley. 6.50 to go in the fourth. The lead is 21. Dominant is an understatement for the last couple of minutes by Penn State Lehigh Valley. Yeah, just that's whatever, like I've been mentioning, whatever Coach Khalil said in that locker room to her players just really has stood out to me right now is that the tempo has been picked up by them even more. Rebecca Martin to Milliron. Coach Khalil screaming for pressure, and the three pointer is good by Shannon Shaw. Second of the quarter for her, and 
That's why Coach Khalil's so frustrated. That could have been prevented. Giracello, no one's on her. She didn't want to drive. Not sure why. She will now. Offing's battling for it underneath. She'll lose out. Du Bois gets another takeaway. Turnovers for both teams high tonight, but more so Du Bois. Giracello, the steal. Crafty layup won't go. And then the ball bounces out of bounds. It'll go back to Du Bois. But I don't think Le Lehigh Valley will be pleased with the turnovers they've had tonight because it hasn't been anywhere near clean from them. But they've been able to create so many that I think they might be able to overlook it a little bit. A little bit, but I think that's something when Lori, Coach Lori Curiel looks at the stat sheet, she's not going to be pleased about. She probably wants that number. Usually probably around 8, 9 a game. Right now it's almost impossible to play turnover-free basketball, but that's where you really want it. Mill iron to the inside. Bucket no good from Bowser. Hillary Offing might have had something to do with that. Here's Giracello. Neal. Uh-oh, Chloe Cassidy for three. It's good! Her second of the night. And Lehigh Valley up by 21. Mill iron. Five and a half to go. Underneath. Bodies hit the deck. Out of bounds. Lemur couldn't keep it. Ball to Lehigh Valley. Giracello running the point for the second Lehigh Valley unit. And she'll drive. And almost score. Offing battling for the inside. Couldn't get it. Bowser did her job and stood her ground. Mill iron. Bowser. Three-pointer in the corner on the way. No good that time from Martin. Offensive rebound kept it alive, but then it falls into the hands of Trinity Neal. Neal weaves her way through, scores for two. Still full court press, up 23. Martin. Mill iron. Shaw quickly to the inside, Bowser too strong. Rebound somehow worked its way back to Natalie Bowser and there's two more for her. And now a steal. And then she couldn't control it out of bounds off of Shannon Shaw back to Lehigh Valley it goes. And checking in for the first time now for Penn State Lehigh Valley tonight will be Abby Fander. Abby is a freshman. And a timeout on the floor. It's a full timeout taken by Coach Pat Lewis and Penn State Du Bois. So 70 to 49 the score around the 427 mark of the fourth quarter. It's looking good from a Lehigh Valley perspective to go to six and two. Yeah, you mentioned earlier, Joey, that they might come up with a little short of their average points. Right there at 70 right now. So that good job by Coach Khalil and this Penn State Lehigh Valley Lions getting their offense going right now. Not sure what the over-under was tonight, but good teams win, great teams cover. That's what Coach Khalil's side have done tonight. Lining up right on cue with how many points per game they average. Not there yet, but nine more. She knows what I was saying. She looked right at me. I told her I wanted 80 tonight. They've got four and a half minutes to get 10 more. And Lehigh Valley's ready. Penn State Du Bois finally making their way onto the court. And you get a look at the Southern Lehigh cheerleaders. Coach Khalil brings them to one game a year. And they are in full voice tonight. Have a great game to watch by the Penn State Lehigh Valley Lions. A lot to cheer about on this Friday evening. Hillier reoffing. Giracello drives with her left. Floater. Good. Gabby Giracello with a little hook. The lead's 23. Mill iron. Working on Neal. Gets doubled, gets tripled. Shaw to the inside. Bowser. Hillary offing stood her ground. Rebound works its way to Giracello. That is a double dribble. She thought about passing. Couldn't get it away. Turnover Penn State Lehigh Valley. Du Bois takes it. Shannon Shaw will throw it in. 
3.50 to go in the fourth and final quarter. Bowser going up strong, but Hillary Offing wins again. Deep two on the way from Milliron, no good. Rebound fought for in there and controlled by Lemur. Lehigh Valley foul against number 21. That's Fander, her first. And a substitution. Trinity Neal will exit, making way for Dana Mighty. So Mighty will check in for the first time this game. Giracello will check out as well. Du Bois inbounds it. That three on the way and good from Shannon Shaw. Two point deep, excuse me, deep two. Chloe Cassidy running the point now for Lehigh Valley. Looking for her third three of the night. Too strong. Rebound to Du Bois Miller, Milliron. 3.18 to go. Very impressed about how this Penn State offense has come to live. More turn forcing more turnovers and then converting off those turnovers. Able to grow that lead to 21 to in this half. Milliron no good on that layup. And the defense fuels the offense. We've said that. That's what Coach Khalil preaches to these players. And tonight it's true again. Three minutes to go. Lehigh Valley in full control. Just trying to have a clean and composed end to what will be their sixth win of the season. Dana Mighty passing it off to Hillary Offing. Two freshmen who are going to be really huge for this Penn State team the next couple of years. Shaw to the corner. Milliron will drive and shoot. Left it short. Rebound kept alive under there, but... Then a foul is called as the rebound was controlled by Fander. <laughs> the grind don't stop with Coach Khalil. Nope, coaching, no matter what the score is. That's what you always want. Cassidy. Fander puts it up, left it short. The bench nearly went crazy. Fander still fighting for it, got blocked. Ture. Top of the key now. Works its way to Shaw for three, well short. Putback is good that time from Tara Lemer. Chloe Cassidy now. Under two to play. Going to the inside. Another debutant on the night and entering, almost entering herself to the score sheet that time was Anasia Hines. Here's Offing. Hillary Offing is having a huge game as well on the inside for Penn State Lehigh Valley. Ture. Shaw thought about it. Back to Ture. Shot on the way here, no good that time from Sherry Kephart. Coach Edwards behind us, Joey, getting ready for his team to take the court. Looking forward to seeing them off to a quick start. They are also five and two, just like the women's team. That game following the conclusion of this one. Here comes Chloe Cassidy. Drives, lost the handle. Referees in discussion, it'll stay with Penn State Lehigh Valley. So with a minute three to go, both coaches trying to just get some players in there, give them some game time. Here's Dana Mighty. Thrown to the inside, Fander fouled, and Fander will shoot two at the line, and the bench loves it. Way off the mark with her first. Yeah. 
One of two for Abby Fander. Here is Ture. As we're under a minute to go. Edson, top of the key now with... And that one's a three on the way and good. That three point basket, good from Hudgens. Actually, hey, hold that side. Let me go 48 seconds to go, 77 57. We have Alley can take this down to 18 seconds or keep going for points. They'll go inside to Offing, drive strong. Hillary Offing, two shots coming at the line. Still attacking the rack, Hillary Offing. So Offing will get two. She's had a really good game. Short on the first. She's, I think, that missing paint presence that Coach Khalil's been trying to find. You have Crozier's height, mm -hmm. and you have now on the court right now an Anasia Hines, who is also tall. But Hillary Offing, she just battles. Yeah, you're going to need that, especially down the stretch when you're going to play a team like Penn State, Schuylkill, or Penn State, Schuylkill, and all that. Something they lacked last year, and it showed against when they played them. Yeah, when you played Penn State, Schuylkill, they played them twice in the regular season, lost both, then lost to the championship game as well. And there was one reason, right. the paint. And that is something that Coach Khalil wanted to improve in the off season, and she definitely has been able to do that. So that meeting with Skuka will be very exciting when it comes around. Shot clock is off. Lehigh Valley gets tied up, though. They'll retain possession. And with 18 seconds to go, Penn State Lehigh Valley can chalk this one up in the win column, go to 6-2 and two overall, 3-1 and one in the conference. It's their third straight win since losing to Beaver and... Chloe Cassidy is content with just dribbling out this clock. And for Penn State Du Bois, they will fall to two and four through their first six. And what was an 11 point halftime lead for Penn State Lehigh Valley turns out to be a 22 point win for Penn State Lehigh Valley. Coach Khalil's side go to six and two. We want to remind you that following the conclusion of the game, Derek will interview Nia Newman, our player of the game, and head coach Lori Khalil, and then we will get ready for the men's edition of Penn State Du Bois, Penn State Lehigh Valley. Derek's on his way down to the microphone now, and you see the teams congratulating each other. Best of luck. Coach Khalil will make her way down. An all-out effort from Penn State Lehigh Valley. Wasn't their cleanest performance, but they got it done in the end. And six wins from eight, not too bad. Coach Khalil, Coach Khalil will be happy with that. And as soon as we get everything situated, Derek will have Nia Newman and Lori for a post-game interview. Down here with Nia Newman. Nia, 6-2 and two of the year. Quick start to start the season. How does this one feel? I think it's really accomplished that everyone's able to work together, and I believe that we're able to build our team chemistry now, especially with a new team. And I think we're going to be really good at the end of the year. Big third quarter for you, nine points, and you're all over the court defensively. Was that something that you needed to come out and do and Coach Khalil praised you that she needs you in that third quarter to start taking over? Yeah, I believe she like we switched the where I was before from the last two games. I started playing at the top of the um, three-point line. And I believe that's the best fit for me where I'm able to get most of my points and most of my steals. Thoughts on going into the next one? Um, I hope we can come in with the same energy and I know we'll do great. Thanks, Nia. Thank we'll, you. We'll bring in Coach Khalil. Coach. Coach, big win tonight, big third quarter from your team. What does it say for your team to be able to adjust that half and have that big third quarter? Yeah, it's it's teamwork. I mean, we got players, you know, like we're subbing in a lot of players. Everybody got to play tonight, and, you know, we're going to continue to need everybody in order to, you know, sustain what we want to do. And, you know, they responded. The refereeing was – it was very inconsistent. It's okay. It happens, and we, we adjust it. We adjust it because the third quarter, 
I think with the seven, there were seven minutes left. We were at five fouls already. I'm like, wow. Okay. We, I said we got to play discipline, and we did a great job from then on, and and then we blew it open. You mentioned your team not getting some of the whistles by based off the way the game was officiated. What does that say about your team not to get flustered and continue to play their game? Yeah, I really harp on discipline, and I feel like in these moments when things were kind of the momentum's against us, like we need to rely on our discipline. We need to rely on okay, we we play structured all the time and we're organized to organize chaos, but um, you know it's discipline. That's what it comes down to. Six and two to start the season. How does it feel? Yeah, I'm really proud of these guys. Like. You know, everybody's trying to find their niche, and um, and we're doing it as a team. We're doing it as from the first person to the, the person down here that was injured, you know, and it's it's a team effort 100%. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you, guys. Good to have you guys back. <laughs> Joey, back to you. All right, Derek, thank you very much. So Penn State Lehigh Valley women's close it out with a 78-56 win over Penn State Du Bois. As you see, warm-ups on the court for the men's edition. That tips off at eight, around 8.07. We'll go with as there's 17 minutes till tip. So Derek's running back here. We'll get his closing thoughts and then get you ready for the men's edition. Derek, uh, good interview down there. But just to close this out here, what stood out to you most about the, why Penn State Lehigh Valley was able to pull away? You know, I think the obstacles they had to overcome. I mean, the score didn't really dictate the obstacles they had to overcome. But, you know, Coach Khalil mentioned the officiating. Sometimes you're not going to be able to get those whistles and get those calls. So I think continue to stay disciplined when you're in foul trouble and continue to play your game and not get flustered by the way the game is being officiated. And like, that third quarter, Joey, was very impressive. They came out. Turn it up the tempo. I didn't even think it was possible for Penn State Lehigh Valley to be able to take control the way they have with that, the way they were able to. So I, that was what has stood out to me. And then the ability to create turnovers. On the Penn State Du Bois side, I just think some growing pain showed and some fatigue might have showed. But they're going to be really good once they continue to develop. Absolutely. They had five freshmen of a 10-man roster, so they are going to be good in years to come. But that's the final from the women's game. 78-56, Penn State Lehigh Valley moves to 6-2. and two. Come back to us around 8.07 for the tip-off of the men's edition. For Derek Moore, Joey Draper, our producers, we are done.